Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to Bluegrass Home and Garden TV. It is that time again that my good friend Kate Horning joins us yeah. on the show. And I was joking beforehand, I was like, you know, this is kind of like our Pinterest hits and misses, but I know it's always going to be a hit because I don't, because it's hard recipes. And when have I ever been like, you know what, Kate, that one just totally missed the mark. You need to like redo that. I know, I got a lot to live up to today, I guess. They're always fabulous. And when I cook them for friends and family, they always rave and they're like, Amber, I had no idea you're such a good cook. I was like, yep. it's nice to have a friend who's a chef who teaches me the ways. <laughs> it was fine. You were telling me what you were having for dinner last night. And I was like, dang, I'm impressed. You wouldn't have been if you had actually been there, but the kids <laughs> ate it. So it was, it was a win for sure. So you're going to walk us through a couple of recipes yes, today. So what we two. got? Yeah. So we're doing kind of spring is coming. So I'm kind of in that mm -hmm. spring mood. So we're doing some really simple springtime recipes. So for the first one, it's overnight oats. So we always talk mm -hmm. about on the go, you know, you're saying how busy you are with the kids. This is the best breakfast because you literally prep it ahead, okay. sits overnight, grab it in the morning and go. Okay. And then the second one we're gonna do is a, a perfect weeknight meal. After a busy day, you come home, you're tired, it's a lemon um, pasta. So Ooh. just lemon, arugula, basil, so simple. You could add mm. chicken, shrimp, anything your kids like to it for protein, but um, it comes together in like 15 minutes. Yeah, I like to, especially like when try to add meat, I'll get some of those rotisserie chickens yes. just to make it even easier. Yeah. Just pull it off, the kids love it. Sounds like a win. Perfect. All right, we'll be back here in just a few. Stay tuned. Well, I am back with Art, Hover to Hover Mechanical. Mm -hmm. Hover, where, where are your glasses? He just told me that he hit that mark. I'm embarrassing here, y'all. That he had to start wearing glasses. That he's trying to like do this without him. I'm, yep. I'm picking on. Him. Yeah. It's been a while since we've been able to do this together. It so has been. It has I gotta been. show him a little extra love. I'm old. What can I say? <laughs> We're all getting there. <laughs> My time's coming. Yeah. All right. So you've been telling me that you've been having a lot of people having issues with drainage issues. Yes. Because we've been getting a lot of rain and yes, snow and melting. So. Yeah. Kind of talk us through that. Well, the water, uh, the ground so saturated that when we are getting these massive, these massive amounts of water from the rain and then the, the melt, it has nowhere to go. Okay. And so we have actually have one system that is pretty much going to have to be replaced because the crawl space flooded because the sump pump failed. Okay, I didn't even think of a mm -hmm. sump pump yep. in a crawl space. Yeah, there's a lot of crawl that, that have it because especially in older neighborhoods, they do not, um, the drainage around the house are a little different and everything has to settle so much that it just is seeping into there. So we've added sump pumps to places that never have had it before because they flooded and most of the time on houses, units are in a crawl space or an attic. And so if they're in a crawl space, when that level gets in there, you're getting all, your, all the, the components of it. And so then it becomes a whole lot more than just a sump pump. Okay, so if you are on a crawl space mm -hmm. and you don't even know, not that I'm speaking from experience, if you have a said sump pump. Mm -hmm. Please tell me I don't have to get in that, that crawl space. You don't have to, you can get us to. We can come out there and do it. Or if you just poke your head in there, you, it should typically be somewhere seen uh, without having to get too far into it. Um, okay. Now, if your crawl space opening is in the back versus the side, it might be a little further out because it's probably going to the, the front of your house, so. Lucky me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, lucky whoever I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, obviously we're going towards spring. We're going to mm -hmm. get more rain. Definitely need to be putting this on our radar. So yep. how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they can give us a call at the office at 859-340-4509. Here at Hubbard Mechanical, when we say we only charge you for the services you need, we mean it. We've got the invoices to prove it. This customer was told that the repair is going to be $1,200 by a flat rate book. We were going to save them hundreds of dollars but we end up saving $900 because we found out the departs were under warranty. This is just one example of how we save our customers money during their time of need. So next time you're in need, give us a call here at Hub Mechanical and see the difference yourself. How do you create the garden of your dreams? The right plants, in the right place, with the right soil, and with our advice. Come see us at Springhouse Gardens, where buying plants is a walk in the park. The WKYT First Alert Weather App, alerting you first to inconvenient weather, tracking storms live, and bringing you hour-by-hour -hour forecast wherever you are. Download the WKYT First Alert Weather App today. We are back, and I'm just sitting here reminiscing with her of all some of my favorite recipes, like, oh, the panzanella salad. <laughs> Gotta get some new ones into your repertoire. I know, but man, if it's not broke, <laughs> don't fix it, right? Because, yeah, I just keep pawning that off onto other people to try yeah. and they're like, ooh, 
Ooh. Well, hopefully so. these will be added to your rotation. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is basically this is an assembly thing. You just kind of dump, stir, put in the fridge. So first things first, oats. Okay. So I like old fashioned just oats run, right in the bowl. Okay. Yep. This sounds yep. like one I could get the kid involved Easy. in. Easy. And you can make as much or as little. This is just one portion we're making, okay. but you can make enough for four or five days. Almond milk. Oh, Vanilla okay. unsweetened almond milk. So good. So sweet without mm -hmm. any sugar. A um, little fresh vanilla, just a little dash of it. I'm afraid to give it to you because there'll be half the bottle in there. Amber loves her vanilla. Um, a little bit of honey, I will let you do that. Okay. It's kind of stuck shut. Um, about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm going to add some chia seeds. These are really good healthy omega-3 fats. Um, they're really good fiber, so it fills you up. Mm -hmm. um, and they add this like nice little texture. It's kind of like little a, bubbles. Yes, yes, a little chew um, that I, I just love in the oats. And then we've got strawberries and bananas are the fruits that I'm using, but you could use blueberries, you could use raspberries, you could use um, really anything. So I'm just going to cut these up. Okay. A couple of strawberries, half of a banana. Everything's going to get stirred together, so I'll let you stir this. Okay. Um, and then this is just going to go into the refrigerator. I would say four hours minimum, but overnight is ideal. Again, it'll last about five days, so you can make enough for the whole week and just kind of portion it out and okay. and go from there. Well, so, and I always find, especially with kids, like if I have my kid before they ever try it, help make it, they will try. Yeah, and this is a great one because there's really not you know no cooking involved. The kids can kind of just stir, mm -hmm. mix. You can portion it all out for them and easy. And they like bananas. They like strawberries. Yeah. So, so we're already we winning. There we go. You can <laughs> add some butter, nut butter in there. You could add nuts. Um, anything really goes. Yeah, and I have these cute little mason jars that actually, because of my love for Celtic salt, thanks to her, because there's actually a big, nice, huge bag over here. I was saying I keep a huge container of that, yeah. and then take little tiny mason jars. And like when I have people over and cook, and I tell them about the Celtic salt, I send them home with a little bit so they have it to use themselves. Yeah. So, so put those in the mason jars, and then you just grab them and go. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge again overnight. Yeah. And this would be really cute. Those little mason jars too, because they're just so cute. Hmm. All it. right, Love so it. we're just going to yep, pop this in the fridge and it'll be ready soon. All right, we'll be back here in just a few. Stay tuned. So we're in this pretty formal uh, setting and I'm challenged sometimes to create tablescapes. And with anticipation of spring coming, I um, wanted to do something that feels like it's transitional, but I also didn't want to do something typical also that was too formal. So I started with things that are a little more casual and it's this woodland feel is what I kind of imagine to be. Uh, this beautiful old piece of sliced log was made by a dear friend of mine who's long since passed and I absolutely love this. Uh, and I just wanted to start as my tray in essence in the center of the table to start with. And then there's this whole idea that I keep coming back to of uh, shopping in your own house. And the reason I mention this is these uh, chunky wooden uh, candlesticks are usually sitting on the coffee table in the family room. And then I love those so much. I thought, well, this is kind of wood and then woodland. I'm going to bring them and put them in this dining room setting. And I thought, what a beautiful combination. And then, you know, I think candlelight is nothing uh, that uh, it just always makes a party or an event or even a family dinner um, feel special and we sell these candles at the store and they absolutely just burn forever. So the long story on that one is this. I've got this starting point center of the table and we're going to come back and we're going to fill it in with these beautiful little vases and little bird's nests that kind of the, again anticipation of spring coming and uh, I think we're all ready for that. See you in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Richard Weber from Springhouse Gardens. Did you know that getting your hands dirty is sometimes a good thing? Digging in the dirt has been proven to reduce stress and provide a sense of happiness and contentment. Come find your happy at Springhouse Gardens. Get ready, go, and the morning race is on. Making breakfast, getting the kids dressed, and out the door. Mornings can be rough. But don't worry, we'll get you ready as you get ready. Start your day with Victor, Kristen, Andrea, and Jim on WKYT Mornings. New in 2021, the name that defines the very best. Jimmy Nash Homes brings you new communities, new floor plans, and styles featuring Anderson Windows and Doors, the most trusted name in windows and doors. See it all at JimmyNashHomes.com. Here at Hub Mechanical, when we say we only charge you for the services you need, we mean it. We've got the invoices to prove it. We're constantly saving our customers hundreds of dollars. So next time you're in need, give us a call here at Hub Mechanical and see the difference yourself. 
As meteorologists, we hear it all the time. That's Kentucky weather for you. It's true. Weather around here can seem complicated and disrupt your day. Heavy rain gearing back into parts of central Kentucky. But that's why we're here working for you to make it easy to understand. That's the actual frontal boundary itself. So you can see the significant wind change with it. So when you get the first alert, you'll be ready wherever you are to keep your family safe. It's not complicated. We cover it all. WKYT first alert weather only on We are back. Oats are in the fridge, so now we're going to start working on dinner. So okay. like I mentioned earlier, this is a great, just come home after a busy day. Last thing you want to do is cook dinner. It takes two pots okay. and about 15 minutes, and you've got a delicious and healthy meal for your family. And we've already seasoned our water with Celtic yep. salt. so I've got water boiling. Always season your pasta water. You guys, that's like the biggest thing I think we're missing out on because yeah. pasta has no flavor. And if you add some salt to your water, it infuses into the, salt, the pasta while you're cooking, and it just gives a much richer flavor. I feel like Celtic salt makes everything taste better anyway. So. <laughs> it does, it does. So I'll have you put a little medium heat under the second skillet. Okay. And this is basically where we're just going to do some garlic-infused olive oil. So this is basically lemon, mm. garlic infused used oil, um, arugula, fresh basil, and Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. So again, mm. very limited ingredient wise, all stuff oh, you good. should have on hand for the most part. Um, if you don't have arugula, you could use spinach, or if you don't like arugula, you could use spinach. I love arugula though, um, man, I really like arugula. I do too, you know, and one of my favorite go-tos for a quick lunch is I buy the lentil pasta that has a lot higher protein in it, and I'll do just that, I'll boil it, arugula, and then a little bit of salt and pepper, and oh. olive oil. It's so easy, and it's so nice. quick and healthy. And of course, fresh garlic makes all the difference. You do not want to buy the stuff that's in the jars. Um, Trust me, I have tried that as a shortcut on certain it's nights. So and it, to it just doesn't taste safe. It's terrible. So you just whack it, and then we're just going to kind of thinly slice it. You know I like to do thin slices because it prevents it from burning. Um, if you mince it, sometimes it can burn really easily. So we're going to get that. And then olive oil, do about two tablespoons of olive oil. So we want yeah. a good bit of olive oil because that's going to be our sauce. Um, and basically, we're just going to take the garlic and kind of sweat it out. Um, in the olive oil, and then I'm going to add some lemon juice and lemon zest in there, and it's going to create this like luscious, lemony, garlicky, delicious sauce. So, mm. olive oil's in there. I'm going to chop this garlic up. Let's get our pasta into our water, and it's just going to cook until al dente. So, I like to break it in half when I have a pot this small, just so it all cooks evenly. Okay. That's going to cook, and then when we come back, we'll start working on the sauce with the lemon and Parmesan cheese. Easy peasy. Yeah. Stay here. Hey, Richard Weber here uh, out at Springhouse Gardens, and we're talking about evergreens and we're going to wrap up this series on camisiparis. This is a camisiparis that most of you probably didn't know that you were liking a camisiparis. This is commonly called a gold mop and this is a different kind of a hinoki cypress. Um, they're typically called threadleaf cypress but this is a, just a baby gold mop. These actually get pretty big so even though they're considered dwarf conifers a gold mop is going to get up to 15 or 20 feet tall eventually. But when they're babies like this, we have um, these little starter size uh, dwarf conifers or dwarf evergreens, and we have them in little square pots like this. We like to use them in uh, getting ready for Christmas and, and the holidays and winter by just digging them in and putting them into a planter like this, and then protecting them with a little bit of mulch and it also makes them look like they're planted in here. So we just used uh, this type of gold mop camisiparis with some blue star juniper, but there's any number of different dwarf evergreens that come in smaller sizes that you can do this with window boxes, other planters, things like this. This will just be here till um, about April when we'll start putting out our flowers and things, but just a simple arrangement with some red uh, twig dogwood, some pine cones, and a few of these living evergreens. You could also do this just with cuttings that you take from plants around your house, but they're going to dry out. So at least we've got something that's living here. It's kind of cool and having some color from now, well, from November until April and beyond if we wanted to leave it in here. But these are going to get potted into bigger pots or planted out in the landscape. So if you have more questions about this, you can uh, give us a call at 859-224-1417 or come out and visit us at Springhouse Gardens in Nicholasville at 185 West Catnip Hill Road. Get ready, get set, go. And the morning race is on. Making breakfast, getting the kids dressed, getting yourself dressed and out the door. Mornings can be rough. But don't worry, we'll get you ready as you get ready. Catching you up on what's going on. Lexington City leaders are moving forward with plans. Giving you the first alert to changing weather. There's a frontal boundary that's making its way into the area. 
Start your day with Victor, Kristen, Andrea, and Jim on WKYT Mornings, weekdays from 4.30 to 7. As meteorologists, we hear it all the time. That's Kentucky weather for you. It's true. Weather around here can seem complicated and disrupt your day. Heavy rain gearing back into parts of central Kentucky. But that's why we're here, working for you to make it easy to understand. That's the actual frontal boundary itself, so you can see that significant wind change with it. So when you get the first alert, you'll be ready wherever you are to keep your family safe. It's not complicated. We cover it all. WKYT First Alert Weather, only on WKYT. Sizzle. So now I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit so okay. the one doesn't burn. If you want to grab that little spoon in there and just kind of give it a stir. Basically what we're looking for here is just to kind of infuse that garlic flavor into so the good. oil. So I know. It's so good already. There's nothing better. So as soon as that garlic starts to get a little bit brown, you can just go ahead and turn the heat off. So okay. we'll let it go a couple seconds longer. Um, and then add a pinch of red pepper flakes. Ooh, okay. You and I know we both like a little kick, a little kick to our, our sauce. And then, yeah, we can take that off the heat and just kind of let it sit there and keep an eye on it because it All will right. continue to cook so we don't want it to All burn. Right. Um, but while that's happening, I will let you be in charge of the cheese since I know you're so... She knows me so well. <laughs> so good, and I never do enough. She always looks at it like, are you sure like, that's going to be it? Um, so we're going to grate some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, about um, a quarter cup, I would say, of cheese. Right, so a half a cup. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> third of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> and then while you do that, I'm going to do the lemon zest. So the lemon zest is going to have all the oil of the lemon in there and going to give so much flavor. And then the juice is, again, going to help kind of create that sauce. And I'm just going to kind of yeah, I was give this one. Little... I know, you're, you're doing a good job. I see you looking at it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take the, the zest off first, and then we're going to juice the lemon, and that's going to go in with the garlic. Okay. Um, and then the key to this to make a sauce is going to be the pasta water. So when pasta cooks, all the starch from the pasta kind of goes into that water. And I always like to reserve about a quarter of a cup just to kind of add in, and it creates mm -hmm. this like creamy, creamy element of the sauce that starch does. So um, we're gonna grab that as well before we drain the pasta. And I always put a, a little um, device there to kind of collect it because I always forget if I don't. So right. it's right there, ready to go. My little measuring cup, and yeah, I mean that is it. Then we're gonna toss all the arugula in. The arugula is gonna wilt, and it's gonna be coming together before we know it. I'm just going to keep grading. <laughs> just grade, grade, grade. Until I cut her off. I'm going to take it away from you. Exactly right. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be back here in just a few. We are over at the Reserve in Greenbrier with Jimmy Nash at Jimmy Nash Homes, of course. And Jimmy, I'm just looking out here because this is a, you know, seasonably warm winter day. And I'm right, just like, yeah. hmm, I can dig that. That, that, that right there is really nice. <laughs> it's kind of inviting for spring. I know. Can't and I get think here a quick enough. lot of people are like, oh my gosh, yes, a pool where several years ago people were like, eh. I know. We probably do maybe 50 to 60% of our projects, maybe more than that, have pools today. And I get it. I get it. Because after the last couple of years, you want to make everything about your home an oasis. So if yeah. you get stuck where you can't travel, you have everything here to enjoy. Right. So the homes are bigger, an office or two, mandatory, mm -hmm. usually a pool, exercise room. Yeah, I mean, and this one's Wet pretty bars, neat. Two I mean, kitchens. a tan area where you can just lay out and get your mm -hmm. vitamin D, help boost your immune system, right? right? <laughs> Sunken patio. I know. So if you're not in the pool, you feel like you're in the pool. Yeah, and you said there's going to be almost like a little bit of a waterfall effect, which he had me there, people. He had me there because you know I love yeah. the waterfalls. <laughs> That's going to be nice. I know. It's I cannot big, big wait pool. to see that. Yeah, and they're all all the pools are different. Yeah. So. You know, this one's, this is a big pool and, you know, the, these yards are half acres, so they're not really big, but you start throwing tannin shells and sunken patios and it's, uh, it's impressive. It's nice, that's for sure. So tell us what's going on here in the reserve and I know you've got the Waldorf coming up. Correct, yeah. So we got a couple projects under that, in the framing stage, we got a couple to get ready. We have a couple in contract that are coming up and we have like two lots left. Yeah. So uh, out of 53 lots, um, just a couple left. That's pretty good. Wow. And then we're starting a model home in Waldorf. We'll start it here in a month as soon as we can get to it. Now, where is that located for people who aren't familiar with what we're talking about? Yeah, so it's um, Todd's Road and Deerhaven or Polo Club in Deerhaven. So okay. it's, a, it's a rural development secluded the way the reserve at Greenbrier is. All right, and if they have questions for you or they want to learn more about the Waldorf or the remaining lots here, yeah. how can they get a hold of you? Uh, my cell is 859-621-8880 or jimmynashhomes.com.
Everyday Kentucky is all new and every morning on WKYT. We love where we live. And we are excited to tell the stories of Everyday Kentucky. We're going to be here every day with where to go, what to do, and what's happening now. Bringing you the bright side of the bluegrass every day. And we're here. Every day, showing you how you can shop local and help support Kentucky business owners. There's so much to see and do. And every day, we'll see you at 9 a.m. on WKYT. Get ready, get set, go. And the morning race is on. Making breakfast, getting the kids dressed, getting yourself dressed and out the door. Mornings can be rough. But don't worry, we'll get you ready as you get ready. Catching you up on what's going on. Lexington City leaders are moving forward with plans. Giving you the first alert to changing weather. There's a frontal boundary that's making its way into the area. Start your day with Victor, Kristen, Andrea and Jim on WKYT Mornings. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7.00. It's almost time. It's almost time? It's almost time. I know. It smells so good in here. The garlic oh. is like infusing the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, can I just have some bread and I'll just like soak all that I know. up. I just right drink there. it. I would drink it. Oh, so so pasta is done. We reserved our pasta water okay. here. I turned the heat back on underneath the skillet so that way we can go ahead and kind of mix everything up and, and heat it up together. So I've got my lemon juice and lemon zest from okay. one lemon. So if you want to add that in. To here. Okay. To there. Yep. To there. And then about... Um, I would say two tablespoons of pasta water to three. You just want to basically thin it out. Okay. I'm going to turn this heat up a little bit. And then we've got our pasta. You always want to cook your pasta right before it's done. So al dente is what they call it. Mm -hmm. And essentially that means to the tooth. And, it, and when you bite into it, you have a little bit, a little of, bit of a bite. Yeah, a little yep. bit of a bite. If it's too mushy, it's just going to kind of like lose delicious flavor. Then the arugula goes in. And this is great because everything's getting mixed together in the skillet. We're not dirtying anything else. So that's going to go in. Around. I've got um, about a half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. As little or as much cheese as you want works here. And then some fresh basil that I just chopped up. And that's mm. just gonna add that kind of fresh element. Okay, and I feel like I should have used tongs to stir this. I know, but I'll give you my tongs. <laughs> a little pinch of salt. <laughs> Cause I'm making a mess. Here we go. And basically you're just gonna cook it for about 20, 30 seconds just till it sort of coats the pasta, creates the sauce, the cheese melts, the arugula wilts. We don't wanna overcook it here. It just looks so good. And and even though it's pasta, it still has a healthy, light aspect to it yeah. because of all the greens and the sauce is really light. And if you follow the instructions mm. on how much cheese to add, it's actually even healthier. I'm personally attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so good. So yeah, you're just going to cook it for about 30 seconds to a minute at the most. And then I like to turn it off and just let it sit in the pan for about 30 seconds. Just so again, everything can kind of soak into the pasta, all that flavor. And then I think we'll be ready to plate up and serve here. And oh, I think so for sure. Soon. I think so for sure. So soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look how pretty. It is. Let me show you guys. Like, look how pretty that looks. Can you mm. imagine? And we were talking shrimp on top of that chicken. You said rotisserie chicken. Yeah, just for ease. I mean, so many options. You could even toss a piece of salmon with that, or, you know, anything really. Pork. I mean, the options are endless. I don't know. I can't wait to try it. All right, we'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. So we're at my front porch. And I always keep coming back to this broken record of don't forget your front door in the winter. We always make it dolled up in fall. We always make it look great at Christmas time. Then January hits, you take everything down, February. And this is when we need to be the most inviting. So these are uh, greens that I actually use for Christmas time and I made it to where I use them all the time. And I took down Christmas inside and I have all these beautiful um, evergreen picks left over. So I'm actually gonna bulk it up I've cleaned the front door, I've cleaned the, the glass. I'm gonna add some more cedar to it, wipe off the dust of everything. And that's just absolutely beautiful. Make them a little more lush, make it a little fuller. Clean the lanterns, got some candles lit because we got company coming pretty soon. I found these great little winter berry wreaths, put me a little nail up there, hung that on the double door, took my rug out of storage, cleaned it, vacuumed it, this says welcome. You know, it's always like you, you walk down your street or you drive past a house and you always see a pretty house and you're like, I wonder who lives there. Well, always present your door as the most welcoming part of your house. And this is kind of a winter that we can use this now all the way through February, really, by just having evergreens and a few little winter wreaths and candles. Don't forget about your front door, kids. You got any questions, just come and see us at the store. 1148 Industry Road, housebyjsd.com. 
Okay. Okay, so you can Go see time. after like a couple seconds of sitting there how it's sort of absorbed all yeah, that sauce. Yeah, and it's sauce. really like mm -hmm. saucy. Yeah, I mean, such as, I'm telling you, pasta water is a game changer for making a really simple. I remember you teaching us that mm -hmm. a few times when we did like maybe the <laughs> fettuccine that had the it was the baby kale and all okay. the parmesan. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. See, I remember. I know the way to your heart. I think, it, I think it's um, <laughs> cheese. cheese. So I typically would finish this off with a little bit of cheese on top, but I think we've got enough. Um, so I think let's taste the oats first. Okay. I'm usually a, a savory than sweet, but that's pretty hot and I don't want to okay. burn our mouths. So oats have been sitting. You can see how they've sort of absorbed all that liquid. Mm -hmm. And now they're like kind of fluffy and I mean, they look amazing. So okay. I'm going to go in and try to get a little banana and a little strawberry yeah, in my bite. Too. Um, no refined sugar. There's really, mm. I mean, there's really nothing in there that's, you know, not going to give you energy. I don't know how to describe it. That almost has like a little bit of a banana pudding type, mm -hmm. like, like, yeah, the texture. I'm talking, the chia yeah. seeds give that like tapioca mm -hmm. texture that just kind of like pops in your mouth. It's yeah. So good. I like the fact that it's not overly sweet. Mm hmm. Yep. So, so good. And again, you could add more sweetness if you're making it for your kids, but for me, like, I don't want any more than I need. And then the star of the show. Mm. I gotta get a lot of greens in my bite. All right, let's see here. And I wanna try to get some garlic. And I, we were talking about this, but the garlic almost is like a chip now. It's, it's yeah. got this little texture that's gonna add a nice crunch. Oh, I'm so bad at eating pasta on. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. Mm. And you get that lemon, that lemon just keeps coming. Mm. And it's perfectly al dente. Yeah, I'm gonna be making that. Tonight, and Amber's gonna go home and immediately. That is fantastic. I mean, oh yeah, and like a little bit of shrimp, a little mm -hmm. chicken. Oh. Yep, and that creamy. Mm, I love the creamy sauce. So good, and just very light. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's a win for sure. And so quick. Yeah, I mean, that so did not quick. take long at all. If we didn't talk, we'd have it done half the time. <laughs> if we didn't talk, that's exactly right. We just focus on cooking. <laughs> forget, I mean, forget everything else. Yeah, be good. You, can't, you can't go wrong with this dish. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that's one that I'm definitely going to have, especially the little one, because he likes to help mommy cook. Yep. That way I know he'll try it. And it reheats really well. So mm -hmm. good luck. You can eat it cold. And I would entertain with this also. You can make a big salad and just serve it, or even just some bread, because you've got the greens in there. That's good. That's good. So. That's good, y'all. Not, not even joking. Yay. That That's good. So where can they find these recipes? ahealthypassion.com. It's a meal planning website that helps you just simplify what to eat for the week. Mm -hmm. um, it's got family friendly recipes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the things. So definitely go check it out. I use it all the time, literally. No yeah. joke. Go there and you can actually download the, you know, the PDFs mm -hmm. and everything and save them. That way I can always go back to my favorites. Create so. your shopping list, create your own custom mm -hmm. cookbook on there. You can yeah, organize by you know different topics. So it's, and it can make you look like you really know what you're doing in the kitchen. <laughs> yes, yes, that Only too. thanks to her. Yes. Make you look like That's a real champ. Goal. That's the goal. Impress your friends. <laughs> All right, this is a great one for spring. Make sure you try it. And if you do, let us know online. Yeah. We'll see you next time.